Question of the day. What is your favorite hobby adjacent activity? Maybe it's going to conventions. Maybe it's uh, putting on some sort of a food game night. Maybe it's 3D printing, which is what we're going to talk about today in our review uh, as well of Serengeti. Now, I haven't printed anything for Serengeti yet, but we're going to talk about actually why that is the case here in just a minute. But I want to talk today about Serengeti, Wild Serengeti. What is it called? Yeah, Wild Serengeti. And give a review of uh, Bad Comments game. I kickstarted this game, so you never know what you're going to get when you kickstart a game. You really, really, really don't, except that now the quality seems to be going up on Kickstarter games because sometimes it would be just, man, amazing components. Looking at you, Mega Man, you broke my heart. Amazing components, but man, the game's just not great. Sometimes that's the case, but now it seems to be more that those are balancing pretty well, that Kickstarter has become more of a pre-order system as opposed to a look, you get this life-size replica of this character from the game for only, you know, 50,000 more people back in the... But today we're going to talk about Wild Serengeti. We're going to also take a look at the brand new Elgu Neptune 3. This is a brand new 3D printer that auto levels and it is an amazing price range. So let's take a look at how Wild Serengeti plays, what it does, and then we'll also jump over and take a look at the Elgu Neptune 3. Quickly talk about its features, what it does, and how if this is the way to get into 3D printing. Spoiler, it is right now. So this is Wild Serengeti. Now they're taking a page out of the old Everdell book because look here, this is a Pride Rock sort of deal that you're going to build. My only issue with this piece of equipment here is that just like in Everdell, these top supports can fray really easily so I don't want to needlessly put this together take it apart put this together take it apart because I don't want this to just ruin after a while now you could put a piece of tape on the top of this but anyway this is a three stack structure that essentially looks really cool but you're putting your your round tracker here is it overproduced a little bit but it's this is the three round the six round tracker here tells you how much money you get at the income phase of each round. It also tells you about the Great Migration, which we're going to talk about in a minute, as well as it holds the two goal cards for the game, which are varied, or not goal cards, I guess, but goal um, tokens. Those would be these right here. These are goals, and I have the upgraded wooden pieces. These are goals that you're going to get based on the amount of types of animals you have out there, all different types, animals, uh, elephants, giraffes, all that sort of stuff. Again, upgraded tokens for me. Normally, you'd get the cardboard pieces here, but just so you see that and don't think, why don't I have those? Or why do I have those? Meat tokens and special effects tokens, these are the two things you can use. You can use this to change the requirement of an item of an animal. This can be used to move an animal one space towards you. These are the different animal cards here. Now, or excuse me, the cards that you need for actually playing the game. You're going to get a hand of these. You can have a certain amount in your tableau on the right, as well as you can have as many as you want completed but these are all different requirements that you're going to need so for this one you need in a straight line either up down left or right it doesn't matter which but the order matters you need to have a crocodile a gazelle and then a vulture now again it could be like this it could be like this it could technically be like this or like this as long as you get it at the end of the game you're going to score if there's points down here you'll get the points at the end of the game if there's symbols in the top right you'll get it immediately when you complete it or if it's got a red symbol around it let's see if i can find one of those you would gain that during the income phase now this is for every paw print minus four you get a star stars are victory points these paw prints are these symbols remember what i told you when you comes to scoring the actual game the tiles those bonus tiles these will also count as wild versions so if it says score elephants even though there's no elephants pictured here you'll score it here the scoring works like that though on those tiles that it counts every single picture you have completed of an animal so if we have an elephant here that counts as another elephant it would count as whatever else the second one is like that some of the different requirements are the straight lines yes this shows which type of terrain that animal has to be on so yes a straight line but it also has to be a straight line in the grassland so rhino elephant in the grasslands this is has to be in water in a draft straight line they're not all like this here we go this is the hyena has to be adjacent to these two animals. This animal, the, is that a coyote? I don't know what that is, it's not a coyote obviously, but that animal has to be in the grassland, he has to be on a rock, and the gator has to be anywhere. Straight line again, let me show you a couple more. These can be anywhere on the map as long as you have these four animals on these four types of terrain. 
you'll get bananas and there are certain cards that are going to key off that the amount of bananas you have plus three points some of them are minus three but the point is there's a lot of different variations with that you have your action tokens there that's what those are before i show you the board i want to show you one more thing these are the expert cards these change the game in a really fun way too these are the great migration cards we'll talk about those in just a minute player aids here then the experts now the base game has basic experts the expansion has experts that come with specialized animals the bow constrictor the cheetah uh, the secretary bird all these are animals that do certain things in the game and you have control over them if you have the python for instance it says when completing a scene card this space that the python is placed on can be recognized as a water or rock so it allows you to make a tile a different type of terrain. The python can be in a space with another animal, and at the beginning of your turn, you can move your specialist animal up to three spaces away. Other ones are just certain points that give you bonuses based on kind of your cards and things, and little perks, really cool stuff. These are all very, very good. I recommend that you play with them. They don't change the game enough to where you feel like you're going to get hurt from them. I'm going to show you what these cards are, and then I'm just going to show you the board and the components right here, because again, playing the game is very easy based on the action. So these are the great migration cards. Based on player count, every round starting in round four, five, and six, you're going to remove some animals from the board. Good, bad, indifferent. Doesn't matter. It's going to happen. So this shows you which ones you remove. Any animals on those spaces, again, by player count, you're going to get rid of. So, four-player game, it's a lot of animals. Granted, a lot of people are putting a lot of animals out in a four-player game. This is what I wanted to show you. Bag of animals in here. Look at these screen-printed animals. They're, some of them are tricolored. Actually, I think they're all tricolored. It's a, at least a, an illusion. It's one, two, and then the background color. Just really huge, huge pieces. Look at the giraffe. It's amazing. These are great looking pieces. I'm gonna show you each of the animals really quick, or most of the animals here. There's a new, you killed Mufasa, you devils. Um, crocodile, looks great, not an alligator. We know this because it's, well, Niles, not not in the States. Here we go. I don't know what that is, it's a musk ox maybe? I think that might be one of the specialty animals, but uh, lions, the little coyote looking dude. I don't remember what that is now. Just really great, great, great looking pieces. Chunky, nice pieces. They all go in this little bag here, which is cool. Not random, you're actually gonna set them all on the board. Kind of annoying to do that, but um, it does need to be done so you can grab them from their spaces. And certain animals are certain types of animals, which brings us to our board. You, based on player count, will block certain actions on the board, but you will do worker placement, more like side in a sense though, where this is shared, but you can't take the exact same action space twice. So if I put my action here, I couldn't just take this space. If I wanted to do this action again, I would have to move it to this one, which costs two. Each one costs you a coin plus. So let's go through what they are. This one is great. Discover. These four actions are the same. It's the four types of animals. I was wrong. That muskox. Yeah, no, the muskox was a specialty one. Thought so. So for a coin, you can discover a crocodile, a, uh, what is that, a panther, a leopard? Yeah, a leopard and a lion or a lion. You're going to take them and put them out on the board. On the board over here are different spaces. Now, the board is two-sided, so you have two different versions of the map. Grasslands, trees, rocks, water. That's the different types of terrain. That's really all that matters for the board is the terrain types. Now, when you discover an animal, you just put it out there where you want it to be. And you can move it with meat if you have meat. Otherwise, you would have to take the move animal space to move. Now, that's what these four actions are. You discover the three different types of animals there, picking one of them. Swap animal positions, you can't do this in round one and you can't do this in round one. Swapping means you literally take two and switch them. It's a great action. Move is move an animal one to three spaces away. Normally you would have a card pool to choose from of six cards. This is take a card plus from the pool paying a coin per card. So you can take all six if you want for six coins. You don't have that much money though. This is you renew it, so just refresh the card pool and then take a card out plus. So those are the actions that you do. And based on those actions, you're going to be trying to manipulate the board to successfully fulfill your cards. You'll play six rounds. The person with the most points at the end of six rounds wins the game.
So this is the printer here. Fused deposited material, FDM printing, the Neptune 3, essentially means this plastic material here is going to go into this extruder, into this hot end right here, which is very hot. It will then take that plastic and put it into shapes, building it up into this each sequential layer. Now, I, this is based on my file. I do have a little tiny bit of stringing. This knocks off instantly. Very, very simple to use. Took 13 hours for that. That's a quick print uh, on by any machine standard. So this is what this machine does. Fantastic machine. So that is Wild Serengeti and the Elgu Neptune 3. Let's start with Serengeti, do the final thoughts, and then we'll flip over to the uh, final thoughts on the Neptune 3. So first, the game looks fantastic. Obviously, it's a Kickstarter. And usually when you hear Kickstarter game, you think amazing looking. But it's not just that. The game has a great table presence because these animal toe icons wouldn't... I'm going to call them meeples. I know some people get mad. I don't care. The animal meeples, they're huge. They're big. They're screen printed. They look amazing, right? The board looks good. I like that it's a two-sided board. So art looks great in this game. The art direction looks good because the art on the cards tells you what needs to happen. You need to have this animal adjacent to this animal or this one in a straight line, left, right, up, down. All of that stuff looks great and it's easy to understand and it's easy to follow what these cards do. Plus, the character cards, the expert cards, those are easy to follow. So all of the art looks amazing in this game. The art direction looks amazing as well and it works and it flows and in your mind you see an icon you go oh i know what that means I, you can't say enough good things about games that instantly you're able to recognize the art and what it actually functionally does in the game as opposed to boy oh, that's pretty now the game again looks amazing but how does it play i uh, um, love this game i love how it plays to me this is one of the coolest like spatial games out there because you really are doing what you say you're doing. You're filming a documentary and what I love is there are even little winks and nods to camera trickery, right? The little uh, special effects tokens where you can, you know, essentially paint out a background. You're like, oh, we can move this animal from its background to here. I love that. I think that's such a smart way to do this where you, you can move animals towards you by putting meat out. So you're filming a documentary. So the theme of this is fantastic. You're not just, you know, moving animals around for no reason. You're trying to shoot a documentary and see the scene that you want to capture in the documentary. Plus, there's great flavor text on each card. So in a nutshell, this is a fantastic game. You will love this game if you like spatial games. Uh, you'll love this game if you like animals, if you like good looking components. This is a, oh wow, that's cool, at convention type games. You'll see it as you walk past and go, what, what is that? I want to play that. So love this game. Cannot say enough good things about it. Bad comic, Wild Serengeti. Again, it's a Kickstarter. Didn't know how it was going to be, but man, is it good. Absolutely get your hands on this game. If, if it runs a second Kickstarter, if it hits when it hits retail, grab this game. You're going to absolutely love it because it looks great. That's enough about Wild Serengeti. It's an eight for me. Love, love, love this game. Let's transition over to the Elgu Neptune 3. This is the newest 3D printer from Elgu. We talked about it. We talked about the features. Let me just tell you why I think this is the 3D printer to get into 3D printing with. One word, two words with a hyphen, auto leveling. Now, if you don't know anything about leveling, the extruder has to move around the board, uh, the, the bed, right? And if your bed is on level, it can cause major issues from things not sticking to not working. Um, boy, that looks even cool on me. Look at that. But auto leveling is the game changer. And for the price point of this one, I there is no other printer to get into printing with be, because of this these features. The fact that you just hit the level button, it moves around and levels itself. That changes everything. Used to, you'd have to put a piece of paper in, you'd have to adjust the screws until you it felt right and never subjective at this point. This one, you hit the button to auto level, and, and for me, on this Neptune, I hit the button for auto level, I ran off and put this print, figured out the uh, file for this print, put it in there, and was like, okay, let's see how it works. And they have never had an issue, and I have done a ton of these on this machine already. I put it through its paces. It's very, very accurate. There's not a lot of, there's actually no stringing at all. It's accurate. It handles all different types of PLA really well. I've put a, diff a couple different brands, a couple different um, types through there. So if, if none of what I just said makes sense to you and you're looking to get into 3D printing, again, let me back up. This one is very user-friendly. It's very easy to use. It's very inexpensive and it's very accurate. So for those three reasons alone, 
this is a great 3D printer. Now, the only downside for me, because I like to print much, much bigger things, is that 220 by 220 build plate is still very large. You can still do full-size helmets on these things. You may have to just do it in pieces, but it's still a great size for doing anything you can think of. If you're doing board game component boxes and stuff, amazing. And if you couple that with some 3D gloop, the PLA gloop, it's a glue that welds PLA plastic together, you're gold. So this... Uh, again, inexpensive. Auto leveling is a must. It's so great. And then the fact that it's very accurate, very clean, and very soundless, like noiseless. This thing is silent. You could have this in your desk, in your room. You'd never hear anything. Some people don't recommend that because the PLA and the fumes and all that sort of stuff. PLA doesn't really have a smell. ABS does. This, I can't say enough good things about this printer. If you're getting into 3D printing and you're like, where do I start? 100% this is the machine to do it with PLA because it's just so easy to use. It's touch a button and go. You'll have to work a little bit on the Cura settings if you have a Mac because <clears throat> the one they send you in the thing comes for uh, PC, but you can get the Cura settings for that. I use the Prusa Slicer. All that may be Greek to you as well. That's just how you get the file that you want cut up into the machine, and it's very easy to do tons of videos and tutorials about that. I even did some on Board Game Breakfast a while back on that. So if you want to get into 3D printing, 100% get the LG Neptune 3. This is a beautifully great machine. Touch screen's great. The function is great. It just, it is. This is the one to get. So that can't say enough good things. I'm Brian Drake here on the Nice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. At nice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you.